Good evening, everyone. This is Lynn Grabowski, and welcome to our Exceed training call. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about something extremely important to your business. That is, what kind of business are you in? So when someone asks you, what do you do? What kind of business are you in? What do you sell? What do you say? What is your answer? Do you start in with a long dissertation about what these products are and why they're different? Or do you have a what we call 30-second answer? If you have a 30-second answer, more than likely you're going to draw attention and more curiosity to what you have to offer. But many people give such a long explanation of the product or the company or the opportunity that you lose the person in the first 15 seconds. So I want to ask you, what do you say about what you have? What do you say about what you do? So let's put yourself in a situation of where you're in a group setting and especially in a group setting where you might not know everyone there. You might be meeting new friends. It could be something like a fundraiser for the school or a, uh, a charity event for the community. It might be a Chamber of Commerce event or some type a, of, of business dealings that you're, um, that you're with new people, people that you've never been around before. And of course, the first thing is, hi, my name's Lynn Grabowski, and what's your name? Well, well, hello, my name is Jane Smith. Well, what do you do, Jane Smith? And Jane continues to tell me what she does. The most important thing while Jane is telling me what she does is for me to listen. Is Jane excited about what she does? Or is Jane saying, yeah, I work for the local drugstore. You know, I've been working there 25 years. It's the same old, same old, but it's a paycheck. And I hear in her voice that she really doesn't like what she does. And she certainly doesn't love what she does. And so as you listen to her talk about what she does, you also engage in her conversation with, and do you have children? Oh, okay, you have a 12 and a 15-year-old. Oh, what a great age. Are they involved with sports or any extracurricular uh, opportunities or uh, outside of school the activities that they do? Oh, yes, they play softball and they play uh, tennis. Oh, that's great, that's great. Now what I'm doing is I am asking her questions that give me the opportunity to learn about her, to learn about her family, about, about why she doesn't like her job because she misses those tennis matches. Or if I might be talking to John Smith and he says, yeah, I've been in sales for the last 30 years and I really love people, but I just don't like working for someone else. Same thing. Really? What do you love about sales? He's going to tell me. I'm going to continue by saying, well, if you love sales, what is it that you sell? He's going to tell me. As we get into conversation, again, I want to find out about his family. I want to find out if he loves to travel. I want to find out if he's happy with the amount of money that he's making. I want to find out if he likes where he lives. Because all of that information gives me an idea of how I am going to answer him when he turns around and says to me, well, Lynn Grabowski, what is it that you do? And I get to say, I own my own life. I work for myself. I represent one of the greatest health and wellness companies in the United States today. 
I get to choose how I answer him based upon what I know he wants to hear or what she wants to hear. So hopefully that's making sense to you that I want to be a great listener. I want to use the one mouth and the two ears I have. And we always say we have two ears and one mouth because God wanted us to listen twice as much as we talk. All right? So let's listen to what a person's needs are. Let's find out what it is that they really, really want and need. And as we find that out, it's going to help us in building our business to be bigger and better because we now know how to uh, identify with that person's needs. And this is a vitally important part to our success. If, for example, someone just comes right out and says to me, without me having the opportunity to find out about them, well, what is it that you do? I am going to look at them, and I'm going to decide what I'm going to say based on their age, based on whether or not I think they're an athlete, whether or not I think they have health issues, or whether or not I think they are an entrepreneur or business builder. And I basically have my three 30-second answers. And based upon, for example, if it's a person I see has health and wellness issues, I say, I'm a health and wellness coach. I help people find answers to their issues that they have concerning their health. If it's an athlete or someone who is younger and I see that they work out, they go to the gym, I'm going to answer them not with, I am an exceed executive and we sell health and wellness products. Again, I am going to say something like, well, actually what I do is I help people to design the body and the life that they would like to have. I'm a lifestyle specialist. And if it is someone who I look at who I know is an entrepreneur, who I know is a business person, then I'm going to answer them with something like, I help people design their future. I am a lifestyle specialist. So whether you're a lifestyle specialist or a wellness coach, you can design your, uh, your uh, description of what it is you do, what it is you have, by allowing yourself that moment, that decision of what am I going to say based on who am I saying it to. Now this might take a little bit of an effort on your part, but I guarantee you it's worth it. I want you to practice. I want you to literally practice a 30-second response for all three of those areas based on age, based on health, and based on business. And I want you to design that answer and base it upon that person's needs and get so familiar with the answer and get so confident with the answer that there's absolutely no stuttering or stammering. The worst thing that you can possibly do is that when someone says to you, what do you do, you say, um, uh, well, um, uh, during the day, I, I, I work at the cleaners, but um, my, what I really like to do is I really like to uh, uh, sell this Exceed product. Um, have you ever heard of Exceed? Now, they, they, a long time, they like 15 seconds into that were bored. So they're not going to continue to listen to what you're explaining or saying. So really get that down pat. Get your 30-second idea, I mean your 30-second response. Create ideas based upon these different areas of who you know you may be uh, presenting to. The athlete, the person that has their health issues, or the entrepreneur. 
and design your answer around that. Get comfortable with it. Practice it. Practice makes perfect. Now, another thing that I want to include in this is that if you have been in the network marketing industry for a long time, you know that many times people hear the word network marketing and you think they shut down when they hear that word. And they do shut down when they hear it. You know why? Because a lot of them have been in a lot of network marketing businesses and many of them didn't make any money because they were never given the support or the leadership or the opportunity of a great compensation plan. And so they become soured and afraid that that means all of them are the same way. I just recently had two people that I invited to a tasting party say to me, is that one of those pyramid schemes? And I, I literally, the hair on my back raised up because I thought, oh my gosh, I have not heard, is that one of those pyramid schemes in a very long time? What a silly ex expectation. I, I looked at her and one of the ladies, I looked at her and I said, oh my gosh, don't you know me well enough to know I would never be involved in a pyramid scheme? And a pyramid scheme is something where you exchange money without a product or a service. I said, exceed, we are purchasing a product, a superior product. We're purchasing that product at a discounted price. We have the opportunity to sell it at a retail price. And Exceed is giving us their advertising uh, fund, their advertising allocation. They're giving that to us because we're their advertisement. We are the promoters. And if you haven't seen it, there is a great video by Eric Worre. Again, go to Eric Worre's website. And he, of course, he wrote the book GoPro, but he also has a great video that is The Rise of the Entrepreneur. It's a documentary where he actually uh, interviews many, many successful networkers, financial advisors, uh, very well-known authors such as Robert Kiyosaki, um, David Bach, many different well-known people. And he asks them their opinion of network marketing. And it's a great tool to show to a person who is questioning if network marketing is real and if people really do make money in the network marketing industry. I sent that video to both of the women who questioned me about what Exceed's business opportunity was. And I have to tell you that both women were so excited when they understood it that they both got involved with the business. So make sure that you have your wording and your explanation correct. Make sure you're not scaring people away. Make sure that when you talk about your product and your company that you have uh, you have a 30-second response that's going to give someone excitement. Say that 30-second re response and wait for their response. Don't say your 30-second response and make it into a three-minute response. 30-second response, stop. Let them ask another question. Have another 30-minute response. Let them ask another question. You see, the more questions they ask, the more control you have of the conversation. So you don't want to give it all to them. You want them to continue to ask. If they don't continue to ask, then next, go to the next person. Some will, some won't. Next. And you must, you must realize that sometimes it will take you at least 10 presentations to get one executive in your group. That's realistic. I know that might sound a little bit, uh, um, a little bit negative or, or a little bit you know, like it's not what you want to hear, but it's the truth. So don't be discouraged by that. Just realize that. In fact, years and years ago, I went to a uh, seminar. It was called Millionaire in Motion. And it really gave you a lot of the techniques in sales. 
I've been to literally hundreds and hundreds of wonderful um, seminars and workshops about network marketing, sales, self-development. And I can tell you that this one little game that you can play with yourself is very effective. And that is you put 10 pennies, 10 buttons, 10, 10 beans, whatever you want, but 10 in your right-hand pocket. And at the end of the day, every single time that you have given a presentation, you take one penny, one P, one button, whatever it might be, you take it out of your pocket and you put it in the other pocket. So if you start with those 10 in your right-hand side, by the end of the day, all 10 of those pennies or those P's or those buttons should be in your left-hand pocket. That means you literally did what you needed to do in presenting 10 presentations every single day. And if you do that, you're going to have one or two that are going to say, yeah, I want to try what you've got. Yes, I'm interested in your business opportunity. Or I think this sounds great. I need health and I need wealth. So remember, 30-second presentation, keep yourself accountable, make it short and sweet, and have three presentations based on the three questions that you're going the, the questions that you're going to get from the three types of people you're going to be talking to. That's it for tonight. Have a great evening, everyone. Be blessed. Remember tomorrow on Thursday night we will have our opportunity call, so I hope you have some friends and family on it. Talk to you soon. Bye now.